together and we're marching in step with the word so why don't you just turn to one another greet him in the name of the lord into the house of the lord and sing oh when the saints go marching in oh when the saints go marching in in this place in the key of C. Amen. We just thank the Lord for his presence this evening. It might be uh, really wet and rainy outside, but like uh, I always tell my kids, the sun is still shining. You can't see it, but it's still shining beyond the clouds. And we're just thankful that we can come into a warm place and listen to the word of God, and I hope you come expecting. So let's sing this as our brother Ryan comes for prayer requests this uh, evening. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And you are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Just lift your hands and worship him. Oh, you are awesome in this place, mighty. 
love the saxophone. It's beautiful. Man, it's pretty. It's like the icing on the cake up here. Y'all, as we pray, continue to remember Sister Frida and Brother Howell, Sister Chrissy Gibson, and Sister Christina Doss. Uh, Brother Dutch had mentioned her again yesterday. Uh, we need to continue to remember her. Uh, also, a special request came in, a couple from Sister Anna Marunga. She mentioned, uh, uh, remember to pray for Sister Erica Parker. That's Brother Donnie Reagan's daughter. Uh, has shingles. Uh, I'm just going to abbreviate some of what was said in that message there, but uh, a weakened immune system. Of course, she had cancer. I don't know what the status is on the cancer right now, but uh, dropping weight. Also, uh, her blood has dropped and she has nausea, just a whole list of things. So continue to remember Eric, Sister Erica Parker. And then also, uh, let's see here, urgent prayer for Sister Betty, who works at our Kenya Embassy in Washington, D.C. That's Sister Betty. And then remember Brother Chris Long ministering for us today and tomorrow. And, uh, and that's all I have here. Do we have any unspoken prayer requests? Raise your hand. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for us to be here in your name again, Lord. And especially thank you for your presence among us. We praise you and thank you again for your work on Calvary, Lord. Above all else, Lord, we remember what you did for us some 2,000 years ago. Lord, it means everything to us. And we praise you for that. Pray you bless uh, all the unspoken requests that the hands were raised for and um, all the spoken requests here, Lord. Touch Brother Chris as he ministers to us, Lord, and just I want his lips to speak and ours to hear. And uh, just help us all to move ourselves out of the way and allow you to work in the service. Um, bless the request uh, for Sister Erica Parker. Lord, so many <clears throat> afflictions in her body, Lord, just manifest your healing in her and just strengthen her, encourage her, uplift her, Lord. And also for Sister Betty. And then <clears throat> Sister Frida and Brother Howell, Sister Christy Gibson, and Sister Christina Doss, and all the other needs that, Lord, that we have in our hearts. We love you and praise you and thank you for all your blessings. Just give glory to yourself and everything that is done today, and we uh, give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. God bless you. Brother Thomas, would you come and take the offering? Amen. Let's sing that song coming down. Hope you've uh, come with an appetite this evening. We always want to come and have our shepherd defeat us. Amen. Oh, Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people coming down. With his manna, he defeats and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to suffer.
be too great no sacrifice too much to make no way of measuring the cost next to the blood of Calvary's cross so if I live I live for him or if I die I count class if they could go ahead and make their way up here for a special and uh, we have a couple of specials this evening and um, it's good to see brother Aaron and Lexi back there do y'all have a special for us this evening I know you have one you always walk with one so you know have one ready and Lord willing we'll call you up here we'll 
Glad we can uh, just come together and have one of these fellowship meetings again and just take our time and just let the Lord have his way. Amen. Just 
amazing grace it is. That's the amazing part, is his grace and how he come to redeem us. Um, let's, um, Brother Aaron, would you like to come up here with your wife and bless us with a song this evening? Amen. Let's, let's give them a hand as they make their way up here. to come tonight. Tim told me y'all was having a meeting. And I didn't have no clothes, so my wife bought my clothes from the Goodwill just a few minutes ago. And <laughs> I had to borrow Tim's shoes, so. but I believe if I come expecting God will be here and I know he's here. So we're just trying to represent him for our little church down in Lincolnton. So I pray that uh, we can bless y'all tonight. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life seas when I'm tossed it sends out a light that I might see and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead us soar. If it wasn't for that lighthouse, my ship would sail. They tear that lighthouse down. Oh, for the big ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use of it standing around. Then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just I saw the light, yes, the light from that old lighthouse that stands. Yeah. 
family come in. Welcome. Amen. Uh, Brother Perry, Sister Perry, where are you at? She's back there. We're going to call them up for their special. We're so appreciated that they drove all the way down here to be with us. And I tell you, me and uh, uh, both of them, we set up to like 1.30 this morning fellowshipping. And uh, they said, Brother Joe, we're not owls. And I said, well, I'm in my 40s. So, but I still hung with them. I stayed in there. And so, but we had some sweet fellowship. And it's so, um, good to have him down here. God bless you. Man, it's good to be down here again. Uh, definitely enjoyed the fellowship with Brother Joe. Uh, we've been trying to get down here for the longest. You just want to let y'all know y'all hold a special place in our hearts. So we love you guys.
I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you believe me now. He turned my whole world upside down. And he turned my whole life upside down. And he took the old and he made it new. That's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm allowed to tell the story how I've overcome. It's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's his goodness and mercy. In the power of his blood So much power in the blood I thought I deserved To be seen for the mercy of my God. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. I'm so glad His goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. Oh, now I'm alive to tell us the story, how I've overcome. It's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. I'm so glad. His goodness and mercy in the power of his love. I know you know this one. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What I 
know who I am, and I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved more than I can imagine, and that. just come kept coming to me they overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony never lose your testimony let that be your story tell somebody how your light shine there's power in that and we just thank the lord for it let's let's all stand we'll stretch your legs here for a second uh, do you believe the resurrection and life is here in the house? Let's sing this chorus before Brother Wade comes or this song. He's in the house. He's in the house. He wants to be in your house too because he brings light and life to all things. Amen. Little girl was lying there. People all were weeping. They just laughed at Jesus. Jesus said she's only sleeping as he took her by the hand she began to live again some began to praise the Lord some began to say he's in the Since that blessed day, there's a light that shines on me for all the world to see. He's in the house, death had to flee, and now there is life where darkness used to be. Last verse. 
once again We were like that little girl Dead in all her sins To Jesus touch this heart of mine And go, are you glad for that life tonight? I'm just a house of clay But ever since that blessed day There's a light that shines on me For all the world to see He's in the house Death has to flee And now there is life Where darkness used to be Now there is home There's no more doubt Praise His name Give our Lord a hand clap of praise. God bless you. Good to be here in the house of the Lord. He get, he's worthy. He's worthy of all praise and all honor and glory. Isn't it wonderful to have all the sunshine outside? Now, wait a minute. That's the way you look at it. There's a sun shining up above that. We were going to Jamaica one time, and me and Dad were together, and about how to shout and fit. I'd never been up in the air that much, but we come through, we got to Atlanta, we about twenty minutes in the flight, it was pouring down rain, thunder and lightning, couldn't see anything, and all of a sudden, Brother Tom, just about one second we got out above the clouds. And it just bathed that whole airplane with sunshine. All that going on, all that turmoil going on just a few feet below. And we know what? We came through it. And we got up there in the clouds. So that sun's shining today. And I hope you brought it. I hope you didn't bring any gloom. I hope it didn't bring any rain. I hope maybe the rain will fall on us. But I hope you brought your sunshine with you. Good to be here. Good to have each and every one of you here. You may be seated. Um, we've kind of made this a little fellowship meeting. Um, not many were able to come. Brother Homer uh, wasn't able to get here. And, and Brother Ubo and the different ones to try to get together. But Brother Tom made it here. So good to have Brother Tom Cushane and his family with us. They're not children anymore. He used to say, and his kids. They ain't kids no more. They're grown, and some of them done grown and took roots other places. We saw Sarah the other day at the, at the wedding. Man, I'm telling you, you raised a group of kids. You and your wife did them. I know it had to be God, but it took guidance from you and, and Sister Dory. All the heartache and pain and trouble, it was well worth it. Look at him. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. Good to have all of you with us. Good to have uh, the one from Lincoln back there. Good to, smiling faces. Good to see you, Brother Aaron and your wife there. Enjoyed that song. That was wonderful. And um, if Brother Tom will come up and greet the people, say a few words, and, and we're good to have Chris and Joanna with us. And, and she looks a year older today than she did yesterday. So 70 is not bad when you get that age. So anyway, come on, Brother Tom, and greet the people, and and and, and have the and have have David come and sing for us. God bless you, buddy. Good to see you, man. God bless you all. Just so good to see everybody. Uh, greetings from the church in Sweetwater. We're we're killing lots of Philistines out our way, and yes, we're Amen. pressing the battle, and the church is doing well. Come on. I was just amazed when I come here. I watched a lot of these young ones grow up and I, I see some faces not here anymore but to see the young ones taking up their swords and shields for the lord got so much to say just take a couple minutes all right you know we went through this covid thing and i i wanted to say a couple things about covid for the world it may be one way but for us the covid was nothing but a door to heaven for some of our precious brothers and sisters we did not lose anybody. They went to the next place, amen, and we'll wait on them. We didn't lose anybody. Everything that happens to the believer was predestinated, foreordained, planned of God. And if that was God's choice to, to have Isaiah the prophet sawn in half, to have John the Baptist beheaded, and to have Brother Ray Montgomery go by a, a crazy virus, so be it. That's God. 
Amen. And right, and we'll see them again. Amen. Amen. And this message goes on. Yes, and just uh, Every now and then we have a little eagle that comes with his family. Brother Ryan, God bless you. So good to have him. Amen. My heart is different from two years ago when we saw each other. And I just can't help but think about Abraham traveling. And he's, he's going through wildernesses and places he's never seen. And he's thinking, this world is not my home. And he's just looking for a place, you know, and he knows God is the maker of that promised place. And he's searching and searching and he meets people and they're just such strangers with such strange ways. And oh, my. But, you know, God was God was good to him and he gave him the he gave him the answer to all his questions. And this message has given us the answer to all of our questions. Amen. We are. We are coming to a place exactly where we're supposed to be at exactly the right moment. Amen. And we'll get to what I told my 14 year old daughter. I says, honey, you get to watch the world fall apart. Yes. You get to watch as the world is falling apart. The things that were said back in the prophet's ministry are coming to pass right before us. What an amazing thing. Yes. You know, you get a chance to think while you're driving three hours a little bit more because of the rain and a couple couple curves (laughs) you know all of a sudden we got to a place we hadn't been there for a long time and it's called blood mountain Mm -hmm. and uh, i thought how perfect i'm on blood mountain i'm on the i'm on the road through blood mountain Mm -hmm. And all those curves and those hardships. And I thought, this is the perfect place for me. I want to be on Blood Mountain. I want to be on that road where the blood of Jesus Christ covers every step that I take. Amen. I want to be on that road where the King of Calvary is trod. And I'm thinking, going down and finally, you know, it's just 18 miles. And I'm just driving and driving. It says 17. (laughs) Like, yep, that's it. And those curves were so so steep you almost turn back and go the other way i think that's blood mountain yeah i'm still going forward though i'm still pressing on i'm still still making it we're still making it this message is so worldwide i i think sometimes unfortunately as americans we don't get to see the power that's happening all over the world but i can testify to you today in chile in in argentina in in a Haiti, in Cambodia, of all places, you walk and there's churches. Amen. What a lovely thing. And I can't wait to hear the word and I pray it's real good. We come for church. Amen. We come to, to let the enemy know where we stand. You're part of an invincible army. This is the day now where we're beginning to recognize who we are. Amen. And there is no uh, lack of water. There is no drought. Amen. In this kingdom. So I love everybody and, and thank you for staying with this message. Thank you for gathering together. My heart just just feels so at home and it's been too long, too long for us to be apart. And, and uh, I just want to quit wandering one day. One day we're going to run, Brother Samuel. We're going to run like children. See who is finally faster. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Amen. We're going to sing. We're going to hear our brother sing again. Amen. Yeah. And, right. and then maybe David will come along. David says, I'll play the harp to that song. Yeah. And, yeah. and now that, won't that be grand? Hey. Amen. God bless you. I'm looking forward to the word. And hey. let's just really pull from the minister. Let's yeah. just have one of them great old services because, yes. last thing to say, we don't know how long this will last. Yeah. Oh, I'm not worried. I have Social Security to live by. Oh, yeah, like that, like they can that. take it. Oh, I'm better off yet. I've got the stock market. <laughs> I've messed around with that a little bit, and I, I've I've used a yo-yo in my life. It goes up, it goes down, and I'm so happy, and I'm so sad. But the word of God will be true. The word of God will go past all of that, and we are on the right track. We are going through Blood Mountain. <laughs> Amen. We're going to come out on the other side of them clouds. Isn't that wonderful? God bless you. So good to see you again. I remember when we were the same size.
Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm just a poor wiffering stranger traveling through this world alone. There is no sickness, no toil, no danger in that right land to which I go. heard that <laughs> that was brother dick's favorite one of his favorite songs he liked to sing and i hope that the lord let him open back the curtain just for a minute brother tom just kind of peek over and see somebody a young man pick up a guitar and remind him when he was here but he's a young man over there amen so he remember he i hope he just said let him brother david that was touched our heart so Brother Dick Addison, our song leader that's passed on, he used to just really enjoy singing that song. And I think you whipped him on the guitar, but... <laughs> Sorry, Brother Dick. I talk about that later. But um, it's good to see these young young ones grow up. Brother Tom, he's talking about Brother Ryan. He's a deacon now at the church and teaches Sunday school. He's been doing that for a little while. But when he first came along, he was just a little kid, you know. Remember, we used to come to... He'd, he'd ride with us in, in the van. And, and he'd have to sit in the front because he got sick going through those curves. And and then he he overcame that. You know what? He could have done like a lot of us would have done. We're not going because we're going to get sick. No, he persevered. He went right on. I mean, we may have, we may have had to carry a couple of barf bags with us, but... We made it. Ryan made it. He made it through all that. Now he's going up there by himself. How about that? So, but that's the way the Lord works, and it brings it brings a joy to me to see that in in each one of them's life. And brother Tom, you know as well as I do, we've seen your kids grow from just from chill or from nothing 
<laughs> from nothing to there you are. And then now you're now you're grown and, and nice looking bunch of kids, not kids, but young adults now. And uh, and all these that are you see sitting here, there was a lot of them ten years ago that were little were little babies that wasn't able. Now we've got other sisters, brother. This is this is brother Ryan's kids here. So we got a group coming up. God always will have a group. If, if if it's if it's of God, He'll always have a group waiting to come forward as the other one maybe uh, goes off the scene and we're able to sit back and. And watch the young people. And we sure appreciate them. So let's stand to our feet. <clears throat> um, remember, uh, Sister Raymond, she's about a month from having that baby. And she's having some back issues. I thought I'd go outside. And Brother Daniel and, and her have uh, really traveled a while to get here, too. And uh, her being pregnant. And, and uh, it was a wonderful day a couple of years ago when we baptized her here at the church. And. I didn't know if I was going to get her out of the water. She had that big head thing on her head, and I didn't know how in the world. If that thing got sold, we was in trouble. But she wanted to be baptized, so we baptized her. Anybody ever want to be baptized, we'll baptize them. So, uh, but good to see each and every one of you here. We're, now let's go listen to the word of the Lord, Brother Chris Long from uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, where it snows constantly. It's probably snowing out there now. But but sent us a picture one time a couple years ago, and you, you could see the stop sign, Brother Tom. That's all you could see. The rest was snow from there down. Then he sent us a picture a few months ago of his, well, it was a hump for a car. He had to hunt for his car to dig that thing out. So uh, uh, it was good that we have this here. I, I'm okay right where I'm at. We're, I'm good. I'm good. Love Brother Chris, but I love him from afar over that way, and then we'll come back and forth and see each other. And we <laughs> But we appreciate him and love him with the love of the Lord. He said he'd never met Brother Tom, so he's getting being able to meet him. He's a good, Brother Chris is a good brother. He's solid as a rock, and we enjoy his ministry here, and we appreciate him. Love him with the love of the Lord. So let's sing Open the Eyes of My Heart as he comes to minister for us. Just take his liberty. Now, afterwards, we're going to have a, a meal prepared for you, so just stay and hang around, fellowship. Tomorrow's service start 945 with regular Sunday school class, and then it'll just be one service tomorrow. And then we can fellowship afterwards. So let's sing Open the Eyes of My Heart as our brother comes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. How many come to see him today? We come to see him, not him. We come to see him. The one that died for our sins. Open the eyes of my heart. And I like that because I'm looking at him right now in the form of the mystical body of Jesus Christ. Pleasure to be here with you tonight. God bless you all. What appropriate words that uh, Brother Tom spoke. I didn't realize that the title of my message is Resurrection by Representation. Amen. But unfortunately, we're going to have to hit a little dark side before we get to the light. I think that's why the weather's so bad outside because... This uh, represents the day when he was entombed, back 
many thousand years ago. And I uh, really enjoyed Brother Dutch's message. I tell you what, that fed my soul. Uh, I, that was eagle food. Enjoyed it, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. He, he just texted me a minute ago, said he was still driving. I told him I went down to the rental car agency and traded in my car for a boat. We may get snow, but at least we can walk on it. Amen. Sure love everybody here. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I don't need to take up a lot of time introducing myself. How about if we just get right into the Word and, and I'll try to keep her under three hours and now you'll be plenty hungry. Plenty hungry. My wife's already saying, uh-uh. All right. Let's go to Romans 8.11. I'm going to, yeah, cut the lights, right. Uh, Romans 8.11. Resurrection by representation. Now, I've got to give you the dark side first. But I'm reading this scripture because it's the end result of the rising of the sun. Amen. I got a pair of glasses in here somewhere. No, I don't need a pair. Thank you. He loaned me a pair last time and they were some girls' glasses and I I just don't go there. Have you got your Bibles open? I tell you, brothers, back there in the back, I found an app that makes the sound of pages turning. There is one. There sure is. I like to hear the pages of your Bible turning, but there is an app that makes that sound. So you guys might want to hook it up. All right. Romans 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. All right, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you this evening, Lord, or this afternoon, Father, for the grand privilege of being able to gather together, Lord, with those of like faith, Father, under the shed blood and banner of Jesus Christ, Lord. We realize that the weather outside, Father, is compensation, Lord, for what happened, Lord, 2,000 years ago or so, Father. We realize, Lord, that while it was dark and gloomy outside, Lord, you were still working. As we desire to work for you today, Lord. Bless each and every one that's made the effort to come, Lord. Thank you for traveling mercies, Father, and the specials, Lord, and the the tender words from Brother Tom, Lord. Help me, Father, I pray, to get out of the way, Lord. Use me for your honor and your glory, Lord, and let he that hath an ear hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, Lord, for your honor. And for your glory in the precious and lovely name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. God is good. All the time. Not just some of the time, all the time. I like what Brother Wade said. The sun is still shining up there. Yes, it is. Now, it says here in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 4, According as he hath chosen us... In Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Now, we realize that this is the real, the, the real and only genuine holiday, holy day, which we can put our actual pulse upon. Celebrate sometimes Christmas, some people do, but we know that Christ wasn't born on December the 25th, probably born sometime in April, maybe late March, early May, like lambs are born depending on the weather conditions. But this weekend is the one time that we know as Christians that's set aside properly. And of course it started... uh, I guess a week or so ago from tomorrow, what, it's a Palm Sunday, when he came into town. We heard Brother Dutch cover that marvelously. I tell you what, I got got some good notes. Do you mind if I I, I just go over a couple of things? And and again, I I enjoyed every word of it. He was preaching to me if he wasn't preaching to you, right? And I like when he started out, as soon as he said the word Einstein. Now, I'm not... Genius. I'm not a mathematical guy like that. I'm not a scientist. But when the prophet of God says something about somebody, it always intrigues me, and I like to 
kind of look into that area. Uh, Brother Branham even went so far as to say that he went to hear a talk on Einstein that was given by a fellow that was famous back then. Uh, I know his name, but it doesn't come to me. It doesn't matter. Uh, But, you know, he said that Einstein was looking for the center. He was looking for the center of the universe, and and he was trying to find it by mathematics. And, uh, of course, he was a pretty good mathematical guy. And I, and I know that I wrote this down, if I got it right, uh, uh, Brother uh, Dutch mentioned that, um, how, how that Einstein and, 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 and mathematicians and scientists afterwards and so forth um, believed, uh, be, believed today that you can travel forward in time, okay? Uh, and, they, and, they, and they formulate that by uh, their, their mathematical formulas. And he mentioned how that Einstein had, had uh, made a proof of something and then couldn't find that last little phrase that he needed in that long five or six chalkboards worth of, of algebraic equations. And he, and he used the word he fudged. He fudged it. You know, he, 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 he thought, well, if I put this number in here, nobody will know. I think that's what Satan thought by trying to inject the seed into Adam's race. I'll put this in here and nobody will recognize it. Well, right away, of course, somebody that has life and not death, somebody eating off the tree of life and not the knowledge of the tree of good and evil would immediately recognize, wait a minute, you fudged it there. Because we, we, we don't go for that. We want all the word. We don't want just part of the word. We don't want 99.9999 of the word. We want all the word. Now, did you realize, brothers and sisters, that that has been the desire of all of the past Christians, believers, men of God, and so forth, all the way back to the beginning. But God ordained a time in history where only one portion of his body would be able to come to that fullness of his word, and we live in that time. It amazes me how that I, you or I can read a scripture, uh, uh, hear a message, uh, hear a, 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 a sermon preached from a minister, and, and, and you, you could have heard that same sermon five minutes, five days, five years, 50 years ago, but spiritual food in due season is always in action. It's a never-ending occurrence. So when he said that they'd proven that, that they, they, they believe now, 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 I don't know that any one of these scientists have ever went forward in time. But they believe mathematically it can be accomplished. Is that right? Now, he also said that these same scientists uh, do not believe that you can go back in time. All right. Or erase your past. We got news for them. But I'm going to tell you folks something that science... At the end of its uh, equations and, and calculations and, and, and postulations and theories proves God. So I'm going to help them right now. I'm going to agree with them, Brother Wade. I don't have to go back in time. But wait a minute. I'm going to preach to you resurrection by representation. Yeah. Oh, Brother Branham told us that the woman at the well, as an example, uh, she had representation. Now, she didn't know that. <laughs> but she had it anyway. And he said the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the high priest and the priesthood and, and the Sanhedrin and all them, they didn't have that representation. So based upon that, they attacked the word of God. 
in the flesh. They didn't attack the word of God in the scrolls. They believed that they had the revelation of what was in those scrolls, but they didn't realize that the word had been made flesh, and that is why they crucified him. We don't crucify you for being a good man now, but we crucify you for you being a man and making yourself God. You know what? It would have been fantastic if Jesus knew that they had representation and he would have said, but doesn't it say in Genesis, let us make man in our image and after our likeness? But they couldn't have swallowed that. So he didn't cast his pearls. He said, I got to turn aside. There's somebody waiting for me at a well. And I happen to know (laughs) that I... In her representation, and I'm going to resurrect a life that's been laying in her since before the foundation of the world. Now, I'm preaching to you on resurrection. We can go back and we can go through the history. Uh, was, it, uh, was it Brother Dutch that mentioned, in your, and, 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 and Brother Samuel, as I've been an eyewitness, that, for instance, over in the Philippines... This weekend, they're, they're t- t- it's probably tomorrow morning over there now, they are really, literally nailing themselves to crosses. They've carried them and, and so forth and all those things. Uh, and, 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 but, but, but they're not going to resurrect from the dead unless they were in Him before the foundation of the world. So my thoughts that I wrote down while Brother Dutch was speaking was that we don't have to go backwards. God always moves forward. What the prophet of God taught us that eternal life is like a circle. So if you just keep going far enough, you'll go past your past and you'll come right back up to where you came from. We don't have to go back. We need to go forward. Is that right? I just got inspired when he said that. I said, oh, I see something here. You see, because what we think of discernment by the prophet is him looking back because we're creatures of time. What we don't realize is that the God that we serve never goes backwards. Those four living creatures always go forward. I'm going to get Brother Wade a hat. Oh, with four bills on it. Postman. Beekeeper. Mayor. He only wants three bills right now. I'll stop right there. There's a fourth one waiting. There's a fourth one waiting. I know you do. Because I'm on your side. God is good. But look where we're at today. Man, I enjoyed that. I'll tell you what. Missed a good one if you missed it. I mean, you know, we understand it. People have to do things. and It looked like uh, he was preaching on Good Friday, but it looked like a bad Friday. It really did. Um, but it was a good Friday. The weather outside right now looks terrible. But there will be a sunrise. I believe tomorrow we'll see it. But I want to put some emphasis on a few things if I can. I'm not going to keep you a long time. I hear your stomach's growling. (laughs) Now, I remember uh, in one of the messages, and it'll come to me, Brother Branham is at a full gospel business, broken cisterns, at a full gospel businessmen's breakfast, and he keeps telling the people at the end of the message, forget about the cafeteria now. He does. He says, go back and listen. And he picks it up two or three or four times. Don't worry about it. It'll still be there when you... Because he was bearing down on something. Yeah. But let me read. Let me start out by reading something to you out of a message, if I could. Uh, the brothers, I'll tell you what, they are, I, you know, I'm just a rookie with these tablet things. You all know that. Uh, and uh, 
perhaps someday I'll actually get used to them. The God who is rich in mercy, 119 to 65. Let's just, you want to go for a ride? Amen. Right now it's a boat, but let's go for a ride. Okay. Brother Branham says, starting in paragraph 30, and I was speaking last Sunday on the Ephesians, how that the book of Joshua was the Ephesians of the Old Testament, and how it was a book of redemption. You see, that's what Easter's all about. And redemption has two different parts. Don't forget that now. Come out of and entering into. First, you have to come out. Some people wants to bring the world in with them, but you got to come out of the world to enter into Christ. Did you get that? Okay, now we were in Him. We got to come out of the world to get back in Him, even though we never were out of Him. Okay, but you and I came through a perversion. But there's a purpose behind it. God has a plan. You have to come out of unbelief to enter into faith. Now, you see how he shifted that? He took us now to a spiritual walk. Everybody is is celebrating the natural crucifixion 2,000 years ago or so, and it happened, and it has meaning. But we realize that in the day we live in, there has been a second crucifixion. There's been an indictment, and it's harsh like the weather today. You listen to that message, and you find out, listen, brothers and sisters, that the ministry of today is guilty of crucifying the Son of God afresh. That's why the weather's not good. But what they didn't realize is that God... Brother Branham said this, and I may be getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. I'll just hurry up. He said that the denominational thought process bound the Holy Spirit for nearly 2,000 years. Now, that's an entombment. (laughs) You know what they do whenever somebody dies? Back in the old days, they wrap them all. They bind them. But Brother Branham said, never said that the Holy Spirit died because it cannot die. But denominationalism bound that Holy Spirit by trying to tie it up and put ownership on it from a human perspective. But here's what they forgot to think about. While they were busy binding uh, the Holy Spirit to to keep it from accessing the people, Jesus was not in the tomb on Saturday. They didn't know that because there was a big stone in the way. They thought he was still bound inside that tomb. But he was busy preaching the gospel to the souls that were in prison. Now, Brother Branham, in the message, Souls in Prison, which is about entombment in a way, okay, declared to us that it looked like that souls that are in prison and Jesus preaching to them was like the third pole today preaching to the totally lost. But that is not all he said. He said while the third pull is the word being preached to the totally lost, it's for the bride. You understand that? He didn't say it in that message, but he said it in a message after that. It's for the bride. And that's the difference between you and I and all the other churches on the planet. Now, I'm not talking about the local assembly here. I'm talking about you being the church. We just had some meetings last weekend for our 11th anniversary. And Brother Manuel Salazar gets up there and says, How in the world could you stay out of church? When you are the church. If you are the church, you're staying in the church. 
church. Amen. We're not talking about the four walls now. We're talking about you as an individual house of God. Now we realize that entombment requires a tomb. What is a tomb? It's a place, the dictionary says, of confinement. See what that spirit tried to do? It tries to confine. It's still here today. It tries to confine the moving and freedom of the word of God made flesh. Remember, they didn't crucify him for being a good man. They didn't even crucify him for being a rotten man. Because that was a rotten man on death row and they let him go. Is that right? Okay. Whew. Okay. Better settle down. A place of confinement. Listen to what it says. A building, house, chamber, vault, structure, etc. in which a corpse is interned. Now, Brother Branham told us about them cemeteries. It doesn't require a theologian. I am far from an Einstein in the message. But I realize that if we'll take what all those great men were looking for through their intellect and education and academia, and we begin to separate, the Bible says you must rightly divide the word Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is sharper and more powerful. It's a discerner. You must have discernment. I know groups of ministries today that claim to follow this message that don't believe you can have discernment. Only the prophet, they say. That is not scripture. That is not message. I'll tell you what that is. That's a tomb. That's a whited sepulcher full of dead man's bones. That's what the Bible says. Right? Still with me. So, so what we have here is we have a religious spirit. That's trying to keep you captive by keeping him captive. But we have proof. Now, what day of the week is Friday? It's the sixth day of the week. That's why he was crucified on Friday because of the number six. It's a judgment number. Is that right? Now, today is Saturday. Is that right? And today is the seventh day of the week. And God always runs in mathematics. That's why I was really enjoying Brother Dutch. He, he, Brother Branham told us he runs in math. Mathematics is not from Einstein. Mathematics is from God. It's just that man tries to put his two cents worth in and he ends up fudging everything. He has to. That's what they're busy doing today in their laboratories. Remember when Brother Brandon mentioned the the men in the laboratories pouring the test tubes back and forth and and, and somebody said, stop that. Don't do that. And they just looked up and, oh, like zombies and kept pouring their little test tubes back and forth. Look where we're at today. The brother mentioned uh, 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 COVID. Don't tell me that's not some test tubes being poured together. And, and they think they're helping humanity. What really are they thinking? Do you think that they think they're trying to kill people? And as I've heard, population control and ethnic control and race control and, and intelligence control and control, control, control. No, what they're trying to do, and they don't even realize that they're being used by the devil Amen. to try to create yes. an Eden. Yes. Right. Sure. Yes. Amen. But it's Satan's Eden already. And Satan is the only pastor. He's the only minister. He's the only shepherd. He's the only God I know that's occupied by killing his congregation. What's the matter with the guy? You with me? This is Satan's Eden. 
And there's only one group of people that God ordained to be able to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy and everything he has to throw at us. And he accomplished it by revealing to you and I what he did on Calvary. Every bit of it is in here. I can't hardly preach on Easter without bringing up Job. But we'll do that tomorrow. All right? I just got done preaching a, a, a series on Job, not realizing Easter was coming. I didn't have him on the ash heap for three months or six weeks or one year. I probably preached on it for three months. But, oh, there's so much in there. But at the end of the day, Job caught something that apparently nobody else caught. And he caught it in such a time where it was critical. Critical mass. I know my Redeemer liveth. We'll get there tomorrow. Listen now. Let's, let's get done with redemption, shall we? There, there cannot be, watch what he says, you have to come out of unbelief to enter into faith. There cannot be one thing in your way. Not one. Can't be a grave. Can't be a tomb. Can't be a church. Can't be your intellect. There cannot be one thing in your way to really have genuine faith. You must absolutely leave everything that's contrary to the Word of God behind. See? Behind. We're not going backwards. To enter into faith. And that was the book of Ephesians of the Old Testament. Joshua. Where, listen to what he says, where Moses represented the law, could not save no one, but grace could. And here Joshua is the same word like Jesus, Jehovah Savior. And now, then we find out that we have come to another Ephesians. Now, brothers and sisters, if you haven't caught it, and you, ha- you will, because I'm going to tell you point blank. There's been a second crucifixion of Jesus Christ in our generation. Therefore, there has to be another resurrection. And Brother Branham, to me, represented Jesus when everybody thought he was in the tomb laying dead. He was busy working. He was preaching and God was using him to manifest not the resurrected Christ the way in you and I think. He didn't die twice. He only needed, the Bible said, to sacrifice one time. But because of denominationalism and religion and science, forgive me, I'm not preaching against scientists, but I am preaching against the philosophy of science. We don't preach against higher education. Did y'all know that? Brother Branham never preached against... Oh, wait a minute, brother. I got ten quotes. But what you don't realize is he was preaching against the spirit that was entering into the system to begin to manipulate and massage and change the outlook of the young mind starting at a very young age. And I'll tell you when it started. When did this nation turn its back on God as a nation? Nine. 1956. And if you go back in your history, you'll find out that there was a turn made in 1956. And it started in the school systems with the little bitty pre-Ks. But it was such an infant. So if there's a teacher in here, please, don't... I'm not preaching against you. I feel something. I'm not preaching against you. I'm wanting you to understand that politics and religion are now two horns on one head. Brother Branham said that that, 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 little, that little creature there that represented the United States, he said, it started out like a lamb. But it turned into a bison. And I'll tell you what, I know a few cowboys, and you don't cowboy a bison. He cowboys you. If he feels like running... He runs. If he feels like taking down the fence, you can't stop him. If he wants to eat over there in that pasture, and he doesn't like it where you've got him, he just goes. Don't get in his way. Because he'll mow you right down. Now, do you see what's happening in politics? Don't get in their way. 
I'm not preaching to you politics, but I want you to understand that same spirit has crept in to the church. And now it's coming around the message churches, which, which, you know why? You know why it's just now getting here? Because they realize, listen now, Satan's not a creator. That's the one thing he can't do. What, what's the other thing? He can't bring the word word by word. So I was telling Brother Wade then, if Brother Branham, and he did make both statements, to me, bringing the word word by word is creation. There are two in that one God. It's creating something in you which will raise you up in the day we live in. And you'll go from the barnyard to the eagle's nest. You say, well, brother, uh, I'm 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 not in the barnyard. You were at one time. I can prove it. I can prove by the words of the prophet that you... Well, you don't understand now, brother. I didn't come through the church. Watch, watch. Now, Brother Branham typed the barnyard as a denominational work. Is that not right? But you forgot the pigsty. I come from the pigsty. That's right, brother. I come in. And guess what the pig has to do when the call of God begins to call on him? The deep call into the deep. He, he, he stops winking. Oh, he still looks like a pig. What in the world was that? How does a pig hear an eagle cry? Remember, that same pig has to come through the barnyard. You see, that's why I see what happens in the message churches today. Not this. When you understand, I'm attacking spirits. Because a lot of folks come through the church. So they were already in the barnyard. They just didn't know whether they were a chicken or an eagle. Now, the pig, he gets a double power of transformation. Remember the brother that Brother Branham uh, talked to and he said, Now, Brother Branham, I don't want to die because I want to make the rapture. Mm -hmm. He said, You get a double blessing, brother. He says, You get resurrected and then you go in the rapture. Now, the pig that was in the world, he gets resurrected and then he walks through the barnyard and hears the eagle crying going, What's that? What is that? He was an eagle all the time. He just had a pig nature. That nature's got to change. Now, now when you get to the barnyard, that nature changes and you think you're a chicken. But you're really an eagle. You just don't know the difference. Has you, have you ever noticed when, when birds are hatched, they're really ugly? And, 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 and they've got no feathers in their heads. They're all bald and they just flop around, you know, and their heads get sorry, you know, and, and they can barely squeak. Yeah. Exactly. But what happens is the food chain yeah. begins to change. Metamorphosis in a way. They're all just little bitty scraggly birds that can barely move and they don't know one from another. But somehow over time, because Brother Branham said the eagle just can't eat them bugs. Now, when he said that, Brother Wade, I'm going to tell you what came to me. Now, Brother Branham didn't say this, so I want to make that clear. But what came to me was there's a chick missing every once in a while. Where'd it go? You know, the mother chicken, she don't. One, two, three, four. It's not a cartoon. Yeah. Five, six. She just says, I'll lay more eggs. Yeah. I'll have more chicks. I'll lay more eggs. And I'll have more chicks. I'll multiply. I'll multiply. I'll multiply. I'll bring forth after them. But after a while, this one bird gets twice as big as the other ones. <laughs> now, he doesn't know he's an eagle. Amen. He's just looking down at the rest of the congregation going, what in the world? And because he's an eagle, I'm telling you, every once in a while, a chick has to come up missing. I mean, it's just a natural occurrence. The chick has to come up missing. You know, and that's, and you know, that's like a church member, right? That, you know, if you was raised in the barnyard of a church and people go, I don't want to be here no more. Hopefully the eagle didn't get you. (laughs) Think about it. There was very few mice around in that barnyard, you know. Snakes didn't come. 
strange barnyard. And then after a while, that eagle began to get twice as big as the mother. Now, the mother's a chicken. Doesn't know any better. It thinks, hey, look at Junior there. He's going to be in the NFL. Huh? Look at him run. He outstrides them all. He hears that eagle cry. What was that? See, he was predestinated. He was going to resurrect by representation. How was he going to resurrect? He's already alive. So are we. God's not dead. He's still alive. But what the devil is trying to convince us of is that he's not here and he is. And if he gets here, he's bound when he gets here. That's what you and I do with him. That's what Brother Branham indicted the ministry for is keeping him bound so that when he gets free in the congregation, the people can't use it and harness it for the purpose it was intended. God is good. So I'll just stay with the eagle story. It's, it's right here in my notes, but I, and I could read to you all the things that Brother Branham, he said some tremendous things about the eagle. Now, Brother was preaching last weekend, and he quoted a quote, Brother Wade, at our meetings. Whew, you're going to pick up your pen and write right now. He mentioned a quote, Brother Branham said. And I started to write down, and I said, well, there's bald eagles. I'm becoming one. There's golden eagles. There's harpy eagles. There's sea eagles. Anybody been at the ocean and the beach lately? Let's see. There's sea eagles. You know. And you can go down the list, and I think there's 17, 19, 15, 20 different kinds of eagles, and then subspecies. Let me tell you something about an eagle. I've been fishing in Haines, Alaska, and you catch a nice salmon, and that eagle wants it, you ain't getting it. I don't care if it's on your hook. He takes it from you. So I began to think, and this brother was quoting, and he quoted a quote where Brother Branham said, true eagles. And I said, look at that. There's another eagle possibility, brother. It ain't bald. It ain't golden. It ain't harpy. It ain't sea. It doesn't eat roadkill. Did you all know that there are eagles that eat roadkill? Not every eagle will. But there are certain families of eagles that will just take any old scrap. They'll take it away. They'll keep guard over it from the vultures. But I found out last weekend there's an eagle that can't miss. It's a true eagle. A true eagle can't miss. Because that's what Brother Branham said. And that's what you are. And you may not realize it, but when we were in that denominational thought process, which still happens today to people, even sitting in message churches. Why, I know people that become uh, uh, isolationists in their own church. Uh, Well, who's preaching today? Well, I don't feel like coming because I don't. But there might be a little piece of meat in there that you got to have. You don't know. Mm. It's getting quiet in here. You need it. I need it. Regardless of who's... Pre- you say, well, well, that brother's off. Go anyway. Let me tell you why. Because Brother Branham said after that eagle began to get a little bigger and it began to develop feathers and it, it still didn't know it was an eagle now. And it heard that cry, still didn't know it was an eagle, but it whoop, yes. what was that? That has a deep call and a deep respond. Oh my goodness. And he started looking around. Now he wasn't impugning and degrading the chickens. He was only thinking about one thing. He was thinking about where did that come from? And the next time that eagle cried, it said, come on up. By representation. That's what the woman at the well had. She didn't realize it, but she was an eagle. 
In the barnyard of humanity. Now watch this. Want to know why I tell you to leave the chickens alone? You don't have to touch them. You don't have to say nothing to them. You just flap those wings when mama says come up a little higher. And brother Branham says where do you get the fence post? But let me tell you something. I grew up around farms and ranches. And if an eagle or a hawk or any bird of prey gets on a fence post and he's flapping his wings, the chickens are running for cover. Because they see the shadow of a bird of prey and that's an instinct go. Then you find yourself all by yourself on the fence post. I got to find a church. See, what happened to me in the world is I wasn't happy on the inside and I wanted to find a a, a peace. And I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus Christ. But I wanted to find peace and contentment and reality and, 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 and all the things that we desire. He knew what he was doing, Brother Wade. I didn't realize it was when I was up on the fence post. I hadn't gone to church yet. I was up on the fence post and all my worldly friends disappeared. Didn't want to be around me no more. Why? Because I'd be preaching to them. I remember the first week I got saved, I found out about the cloud in the Life magazine. I went down to the local uh, auction yard and got three or four magazines for 25 cents a piece back then. It was a long time ago. I've been doing this 45 years. And then I'm witnessing to one of my best friends in his bedroom. We were motocross racing buddies. I'm sitting on the foot of his bed, Brother Wade. There's a bookshelf across from me, and I'm preaching to him. I'm telling him that God sent a prophet and that there was a cloud and that, you know, I was immature, but I was an eagle. I just, wah, wah, wah. I was just going off, <laughs> thinking everybody was going to hear it. Yeah, right. I didn't know. Nope. And I'm just going at it with him, and he's like, wow, mm, yeah, wow, mm, yeah, wow. But Brother Wade, right there as I was testifying to him about God sending a cloud in 1963, lo and behold, God is my witness, right on his bookshelf was a Britannica Encyclopedia 64 yearbook, which in it has the picture of the cloud for 1963. I whooped that thing off there and I opened it up and I said, there it is right there. And he was like, you must have known that was there. He said. I said, I had no idea. I'd heard that it was in one of the encyclopedias, a yearbook. He had it on his shelf. The next week he moved. Uh Uh-huh. He moved. He moved out to San Luis Obispo from from the mainland or the center of California where I lived. But I didn't know. I thought, wow, man. I thought everybody would accept this. Because I thought everybody, I guess, was an eagle. I didn't realize that I was walking with the chickens and the pigs and the pigsty. You see how God operates, brothers and sisters? What you don't realize is that if you were in Him, you're still there. He don't lose one. All that the Father has given me will come to me and I won't lose one. The devil can't snatch one from me. That's what the resurrection means to me. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago, but he's here today. The resurrected Christ is now living in us. I caught something last week as the brother was preaching and we got a picture of the pillar of fire up there and he gets the picture off the wall and he begins to show it and he's talking about how that, how that this pillar of fire speaks. Well, it speaks. Spoke to Moses. Then he began to preach on how this same pillar of fire on the day of Pentecost broke off from itself, but it never diminished like the fishes and the loaves. It was still the same size and the same pillar of fire. Why, they had leftovers with the fishes and the loaves. Can I take my coat off? I'm going to preach a little bit. (laughs) Woo, look at that. Thank you. And it come to me. It should come to you. That pillar of fire was in that burning bush. That pillar of fire was in the photograph. I believe that pillar of fire was in the hearts of every believer. Starting from the day of Pentecost. So guess what, brother, that makes us? A burning bush. There's an attraction on the mountain. They just don't know what it is. But if they turn aside... 
And they wonder, hey, what happened to you, brother? I haven't seen you in years. Well, you got time? <laughs> Sit down. That's right. Yeah. Let me tell you how this works. There is a pillar of fire burning in my heart named Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he was a man 2,000 years ago. Oh, but when Paul met him, Paul met him, and he went back to God. Is that right? He said he came from God, and he went back to God, and the prophet of God says, you and I have the same life in us, so not if we came from God, but because we came from God, we're going back to God, but we've always been a part of God. You say, well, brother, I can read to you quotes where Brother Branham says there ain't nothing good in us. I got those same quotes. I want to ask you a question. Who are you? Brother Branham said, you don't see me. This ain't me. There's a man in here who can turn on the light. There's a man in here who turns water to wine, walks on the water and gives sight to the blind. He gave back life to the ones that's dead. He fed 4,000 with seven loaves of bread. Do you believe that? That's the resurrected Christ today. Brothers and sisters, he didn't die on Calvary so people could nail themselves to the cross every Easter. Died on Calvary so that the life that he lived could come back and be imparted into each and every one of you and I. And what would it do to us? It would transform us. There's a question and question. I'm off my notes now. There's a question and questions and answers. If somebody asked Brother Bradham if they'll explain the translation. Brother Bradham does not mention Enoch. He says, let me tell you about Abraham. And he begins to talk about Abraham and his journey. And that journey that Abraham took, which you and I are on tonight, began to turn Abraham from an old man who was dried up into a young man who could produce children. Now, the church was a little behind him. Now, watch. We don't know whether the church, Sarah, had gotten the revelation at the same time that, uh, that, that the transformation at the same time that Abraham did because she wouldn't participate. Nope, that's right. She said, I got a, 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 a Hagar here. Yeah. I got an idea. See, see what's wrong? See what happens with the church? I, I got this idea. Lay them ideas down, would you? Right, right, right. Right. Throw them in the garbage can. Hey, Take God and God alone. And once you get him, brothers and sisters, you'll find out he's not entombed. That's not a gloomy day outside. That's the same spirit that falls on the just and the unjust, and we live by it. You say, well, there's too much rain. I'll tell you, there's too much snow. You don't have to shovel rain. You come to my house and you'll be shoveling snow. You don't believe me? Listen to what the prophet says. Uh, I got it. I got it here. I'm just going to stay off my notes and stop pretty quick. Thank you. But you know what? It's getting hot in here. I can tell. Listen to this. I got trials, tribulations, and tests written down here, brother. It says from the message I know. I'm going to finish that. My Redeemer liveth. But it's I know. Yeah. The date there, 419 of 60. This is what the prophet of God said. Think about it. We ask for comfort and peace. There I was. Asking for, still asking for comfort and peace. But my peace and comfort now come from within. Because there's a resurrected Christ inside of us. That means that we are able to do and perform all of those signs, wonders, and miracles that he did. He said, if you believe me, these signs shall follow you. People are so, oh, get out of the barnyard. Get up on the post. That's not your final destination. The, the fence post is just as high as you can get and the chickens are running. You haven't even flown yet. You did what a turkey does when he wants to roost. But mama says, come on up. 
You're an eagle. And she keeps calling. That word keeps talking to you. That that revelation keeps coming. It's spiritual food in due season. It keeps feeding. It keeps building faith muscles. It keeps building spiritual bodies. We ask for comfort and peace. God gives us the best he can give us. What is it? The next sentence says trials and tribulation. Oh, right away people go, I don't want to serve that God. (laughs) Oh, and your life is any better? See, what happens is if we recognize that he gives us his best through trials and tribulations, we become real, genuine. God born, God felt, God builded, God begotten, children of God. That's our goal. Not everybody wants to do that. They, most people want to hang around here for a while and save some more money and convert their cash into gold. And Okay, it's not going to help you. You want to know why? You can accumulate and amass as much riches as you want. You can have a food shelter. You can have gold piled up in your safe. And guess who's showing up? If the IRS don't come, if the FBI don't come, if the DOJ don't come, if Hunter don't come, your neighbor's coming. You know, the guy that's got the cash of AK-47s and 10 million rounds of ammo and he's, oh, I wish guys like that in Flagstaff. They asked me, how come I don't carry a gun in church? I said, I don't need a gun in church. According to what the prophet said, bullets will bounce right off you. And if they don't, Brother Tom, they'll, you'll go home. Is that right? That's what, you, that's what he was testifying. God, don't lose a one. Who in the world wants to stick around here? Do you think it's going to get better? Come on. It's getting snowballing. It's an avalanche of sin and unbelief and craziness. But do you want peace and contentment and comfort? Trial and tribulation is coming your way. But God made you to withstand every one of them by His life being placed in you. And to finish about representation now, Brother Branham, explain to us the translation of the bride. Okay, I will. Let me use Abraham as an example. He talks about Abraham and the journey. You're on it. And that journey is transforming you by hearing the word of God and it alone. And Brother Branham says, that word that you're taking in begins to start to form a body. And that body begins to form on the inside of you. And if you keep taking in the word, if you keep bringing in the eagle food, you will see the resurrected Christ in your very own life. Then you won't care what comes or goes. You won't care what the government's doing or the banks are failing or even if your car is broke down, brother, or cars in your case. Because he's given you his best. He's forming a character by the building of that body inside of you. And Brother Branham says this in closing. Did you know the resurrection lays in you? Now we know what the scripture means. They without us. I'm telling you, those folks that have gone on before us, you may not realize it, but they're rooting, they're pulling, they're shouting. Now, there is a half hour of silence in everybody's life. Because you begin to look at yourself, and Brother Branham said, that seventh seal, they were awed by it. I mean, like, wow. It's pretty awesome. Amen. And you come to the real genuine revelation that God, the eternal God, the God that... Ha- don't try to figure this out. You'll become Einstein. What I didn't tell you about Einstein, if you ever watch any of documentaries on him, he spent the last years of his life laying in bed with chalkboards in front of him trying to figure out how to change that equation into a final answer. 
He didn't realize all the time that the James Webb Super Telescope was going to go out and look for it. Because he mentioned Hubble. Yep. That's where they got the idea. That telescope is one million miles out there. And it's got these big wings that fold out. And they're reflective mirrors. And they're, and they're sending and wanting to receive signals. Guess what the mirrors are made out of? Does anybody know? It's gold, thank you. And the way they explained it when I was hearing the documentary on it, I know this sounds crazy, but the guy took his wedding band off and he laid it on the table and he said, there's about five, six, or seven of those wedding bands and those giant mirrors that are yards and yards and yards wide. Yeah. It's funny that he used a wedding band uh-huh. and that it's gold. Gold is the most conductive and reflective yeah. substance yeah. that we know of. But it has to be beaten out so thin that you can see through it. And it reflects like a mirror. Guess what they're looking for? They're looking for the same thing that Einstein and Hubble and all the rest of the astronomers and Galileo and everybody was looking for. They were looking for the God that's in you. We could have saved them trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and and, and tens of twenties of years and said, he's here. Quit wasting your time and your money. But you know what? I heard Brother Dutch say this, that the astronomers, astrologers, mathematicians, scientists, philosophers, etc., etc., won't admit it's Jesus Christ. They won't admit it. They believe in a higher being. They just don't want anybody to know that because then they don't need to teach anybody anything anymore. Is that right? It's exactly right. You love him? There's a body building inside of you. Guess what it started with? The same pillar of fire that built a body 2,000 years ago to walk this earth 33 and a half years and hang on the cross for you and me so that we could become joint heirs with it. Please stand, please stand, please stand. Praise the Lord. I know you don't want me to because you know I can't. But I'm going to sing to you. If the musicians, musicians would come, I can't even say the word musician. <laughs> you ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. Where'd they go? There underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Was at the old time altar where God came in my heart, and now my sins are gone. The Lord took full possession, the devil did depart. I'm glad, I'm so glad my sins are gone. Oh, there underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. That's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. When Satan comes to tempt me, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Come on now, say it. My sins are gone. You got me into trouble, but Jesus got me out. I'm glad my sins are gone. Jesus, glory, that's right, you heard the 
You know, he threw them in the sea of his own forgetfulness. Backwards, where we can't go. He threw them in the sea, put a no fishing sign up, and said, don't go there no more. But what do we do, Brother Tom? We take a fishing pole, and we throw it out there, and we bring them back out. Or we try to. Give him another hand. That was good. Brother, Brother Chris can pour his heart out quicker than anybody else. Now, it took me two and a half hours to say what he said. Yeah, I know you can. You can do it tomorrow. But we appreciate the Lord in the ministries that we hear, the ministers, uh, the different ways of, 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 you know, there's different ways to get to Atlanta. You know, and you got five folds of it. There's a map that you that's folded up, brother Tom. That fold is fivefold. If you unfold one fold, you might could get 20 miles down the road. You unfold it again, you might get 20 more miles down the road. But you'll never get to your destination until you five un- take all five folds and open them up, and let the fivefold ministry help us. That's why we believe in a fivefold ministry. We don't believe in a one fold. We believe in a fivefold ministry that will pour their heart out. And the only way you're going to get it, and I'm going to get it, is that way. We can press play all we want to, but I promise you, you will not get perfected, the Bible says, without a fivefold ministry. Amen? Can't do it. It's according to the Bible. To be perfected, you got to listen to a man. And you know what, Brother Brown? He said that's the hardest thing for one man to do is believe another man. Well, you know what? I don't believe Brother Chris. I believe the God is in him that just spoke to us through that human vessel. Now, that way, I do believe, Brother Chris. Amen. <clears throat> now, we're going to go eat a bite of natural food now. We appreciate all of you coming. We thank Brother Chris again for pouring his heart out. There's so many nuggets. And I want to tell you, if you weren't here last night, you almost missed the rapture. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, y'all miss church and you think, boy, that ain't nothing, just another... You missed a visitation of God last night. From God. Not from some man. You missed a visitation. Brother Dutch Scott preached a masterpiece. So I'll adjure you, if you have not heard that or watched it, that's why we put it online so you can watch it. You need to watch that. I'm going to go back and watch it myself again. Because I'm telling you, it was full of nuggets. He almost two hours that man preached. It didn't seem like 15 minutes. When somebody's saying something... You slide off into eternity and you listen to the eternal word of God and it just keeps going on and keeps going on and keeps going on. We sure appreciate the fivefold ministry. We appreciate everyone, Brother Tom and all the different ones too. The ministry we have here, we sure do appreciate it. We, we, we need to bind together. Amen. You realize today is what? The seventh day, right? Today's the seventh day. Today's Saturday. And you know what? Jesus is not on the earth. 2,000 years ago, he's silent. The Bible says silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour. He wasn't up there. He was down preaching to the souls in prison. But you know what he was doing? He was doing what we've been preaching Every sermon, millions of sermons for 2,000 years, that's what he was doing during that time of silence. There was nothing going on. And then up from the grave, he arose. And he didn't rise for himself. He rose for me and you. I want you to understand that. He did not come up for himself. He didn't come up to get glory of his own self. He came up to get glory to give it to you. He walked out of that tomb, as Brother Dutch said, he walked out of that tomb and those feet that had nail prints on them. He said, I don't think he was down there in hell tiptoeing. He went. 
He wanted the devil to know he was the mighty conqueror. Even with nail prints in his feet and his hands, he was a mighty conqueror. It looked like a bad day like today, like, like Brother Dutch was talking about. The sermon was Good Friday. It didn't look very good. If you look from the outside, it didn't look very good. Very dark. Moon lost its light. All the stars lost their light. There was no light. It was the darkest day that ever was to a, to man, but not to a Christian. We know that had to be the part of the play and the plan that we've been talking about, the plan of redemption. There was a plan God had, and that was per, that was part of that plan. And today, we have seen part of that plan being given to each one of us. And we appreciate uh, Brother Chris again and, and Sister Joanna for coming. And uh, we love them with the love of the Lord. And we love all of you with the love of the Lord. We wish you'd stay around and eat. Um, it's just going to rain on you if you go outside. So I appreciate Brother Tom and his family coming. And then we want to try to get to maybe get a fellowship meeting back into the summertime sometime. Brother Tony and different ones that they would they'd try to we try to get it back together. But I miss the fellowship meetings. I really do. I miss the fellowship meetings because it's a fellowship. We come to fellowship with each other and, and, and do as Brother Tom said. He come up here and he gave us a little snippet of what was going on in his mind. Because usually a minister, when he comes up here, I hope he speaks his mind. Right? He gave us a little snippet of what had been going on. And you think, well, that was just five minutes. To me, it's an eternity of what's going on and what's happening and what's going on in the world and the different things. Each one of us, we bring it all together. And it's a big story. It's a big picture. And it's not a story that's a, a story like a, a fiction. It's nonfiction. The, what, we, what we speak is nonfiction. Amen? And with Einstein, you know, Einstein came on the earth. The greatest mind that ever was produced by human. You understand what I'm saying? The greatest mind that was ever produced by a man and a woman, two human beings. But thank God, you and I, we might have missed that. We can't sit down and listen to Einstein break down the theory of relativity. But we had a spiritual Einstein that came from a mother and father called Branham. But he caught the mind of God and he was a spiritual Einstein. I believe if you'd have got that natural Einstein and and Brother Branham together, they might have been something went on. They would have been a happening because they would have sat there and fed off of each other. But thank God they didn't because they gave it to us. But I like what uh, we were talking about this uh, yesterday. Brother Chris was talking about going forward. You know, you take and if you look at what Einstein, his teaching was that if you could look through infinity, if you could look, you know, obviously it's in a curve. All right. But what did he say? He said, if man could look with infinite eyesight, what would you see? He said, you see the back of your head. There's your new, there's your new body. He just didn't know what to call it. Einstein just said, you see the back of your head. No, we see the new body because that's our eternal that we step into. It's just a curve and we jump in it and take off. All right, visitors go first. Um, we'll pray over the food here. Uh, for those of you that go to church here next Sunday, Uh, Brother Dale's 83rd birthday will be next Sunday, and we're going to have a birthday party afterwards, uh, after the second service. And we appreciate everybody that come. We appreciate um, um, the visitors that are here. Most of you have already been here before, but we sure appreciate you coming and being a part of the fellowship. Uh, Tomorrow, it's not ending. Tomorrow, we will have church here, 945, and we'll have Brother Brother Chris. Just hang on. It gets gooder. If I know Chris Long... This is just a piece of it. Tomorrow will be a good one. Amen. I just believe that. I just believe that we're, as Brother Chris, and I, we were talking. About, I believe you know it says a, a true eagle. I believe we're in the true part. We're not just an eagle. We're true eagles. And and that doesn't make us big headed and separate ourselves. Let God separate us. God's the one that does it anyway. God will separate us from the world. I'll promise you that. We'll not be chickens unless you are a chicken. You're not going to be one. You're going to be separated from that barnyard. And we uh, we know that there's one thing for sure. We're heading closer to getting out of here. Amen. One day further. One day closer. One day further on this journey is one day closer to where we can all be together. Not have to say goodbye. 
And I want to see you and Dad race by the time I do. Well, there'll, there'll be no betting in heaven, but he just might outrun you. <laughs> I've known my dad a long time. He got some long legs. But we enjoy having Brother Tom and his family, and I see now up oh, there Sarah and, and uh, her husband with them. They've, they've just been recently, about a year, year now, two years. Good grief. Time flies. Two years. But good to have you with us. And uh, let's go down and eat a meal. Uh, visitors go first, so let the visitors go eat. Uh, the sisters are downstairs now getting it ready. So I think we're we're pretty much ready to go. Ready? Okay. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this spiritual food that you give us today. Lord, I pray that it will we'll not leave this place up here hungry. That we will chew on it. And as eagles, we want to eat meat. And we want to be nourished, not malnourished. Father, I pray that you will sanctify the natural food too, Lord. That's downstairs, that we will not leave hungry that way also. That we'll eat our fill, Lord, and give you honor and praise for it. And may it sanctify to the nourishment of our bodies and, and keep us strong and healthy, Lord, so we can come back together, Lord, in you. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship that Brother Tom and different ones have come from different places, Lord. <clears throat> Brother Daniel and his wife, Lord, I pray that you'd just cover them, Lord. Coming up with a baby here in another month, Lord, I pray that you'll just cover them with your love and just be with each one and bless us, Father. Take care of us, Lord, as we go and eat a natural meal, Father. Just be with us. Be with the ones that are sick that couldn't be here today, Lord. I pray that you'd sanctify them, Lord. Just cleanse us, Lord, for this journey that we're on, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. From the dead dwell in you. It dwells in you. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead.